Good morning. Welcome to worship at Fountain of Life. We continue our Easter celebration, celebrating that the resurrection of Jesus is a reality. And now God sends out that joyful message into the world that repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached. We begin our worship with him 653, Lord. On Good Friday, we heard that Jesus died on the cross and won the forgiveness of sins for us. He announced, it is finished. On Easter Sunday, we heard that Jesus rose from the dead and that was the Father's stamp of approval on Jesus' statement. Last week, we heard that Jesus gave proof that he rose from the dead and that gives us the peace of knowing that we have an eternal life in heaven to look forward to. So now that Jesus has won forgiveness of sins for us, and we know where we're going to end up, well, what now? What now when it comes to sin? We have the forgiveness of sins, so what is the Christian's relationship with sin? These things that we think, say, or do that are not in line with what God tells us to think, say, and do. How do we think about sin? What do we do with it? How does sin still affect us? Does it affect us at all? To put it simply, when it comes to sin, now what? Well, John gives us an answer. We read the beginning of 1 John last week where we heard that John and others had seen, heard, and touched Jesus. And now here in 1 John, we receive the message from Jesus whom John called the life. We read again this message from John in 1 John chapters 1 and 2. This is the message we have heard from him and declare to you. God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him and yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not live out the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. If we, claim we have not, if we claim we have not sinned, we make him out to be a liar and his word is not in us. My dear children, I write this to you so that you will not sin. But if anybody does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not only for ours, but also for the sins of the whole world. Now that the life Jesus has appeared, what is the Christian's relationship with sin? John was probably writing against a man who would have answered that question incorrectly. A man named Serinthus. Serinthus was a false teacher who claimed to have a hidden knowledge about the gospel beyond the clear gospel message of Jesus. Serinthus and his followers thought of themselves as better than other Christians because they had this secret hidden knowledge that they knew. So this misplaced pride could have easily led to a misunderstanding about sin in their lives. What is the Christian's relationship with sin? Well, Serinthus may have answered that, well, Jesus rose from the dead and we've been given this hidden knowledge, so now we're not even able to sin. We can do no wrong. This misplaced pride from this idea that they have this 
hidden knowledge could have led to a misunderstanding about sin. That they couldn't even sin at all anymore. So John wrote against this idea that sinners cease to be sinners now that Jesus has been raised from the dead. John made clear that this world is in darkness, in the darkness of sin. The only light, the only thing good in this world is from God, where God has come into the world. That's the only good that a person has is from the light that is God. We are still sinners. John said that if we claim we don't have sin, we deceive ourselves. We're still sinners who sin. If John, or John said that if we claim we haven't sinned, that we make God out to be a liar. To anyone who had heard Serenthus' false idea, John wanted to tell them that it is only in the blood of Christ that we are purified. What is the Christian's relationship with sin? It is not, now I'm perfect and can do no wrong. That, John said, is a delusion. It's delusional to think we've heard enough. You know, I've heard that I am a sinner and that I'm forgiven. Do I really need to come back and hear that again next week? Do I really need to read that every day in my Bible to be reminded of that main message of Scripture over and over and over again? That's kind of the thinking a person who would claim to have hidden knowledge would think. We've heard enough. We already know it all. John wrote against the temptation that a perfectionist might have. Somebody who feels the pressure to do everything perfectly or not at all. And under that pressure, can maybe even convince themselves that they are perfect or pretty close to it. Because if they're not, then they feel like a failure. A Christian can fall into this, can delude themselves into thinking that they're pretty close to perfect, because they feel like if they're not, hell might be waiting on the other side. John said, if we claim we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. That we make God out to be a liar if we claim we haven't sinned. Because God has made clear that everyone is under the power of sin. There is no one who is righteous, not even one. But if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins. So it is a dangerous delusion to think that we haven't sinned. And thinking about confession of sin can maybe help us evaluate if we're susceptible to this dangerous delusion of perfection. Now, John didn't say that we have to list our sins to an, all of our sins to another Christian every single day for them to be forgiven. What's really important is our confession to God, that we confess to him who we are and what we've done. We lay on him those sins that burden us. But thinking about outward confession can maybe help us evaluate our hearts, how we've been thinking and feeling about our sin. So, when was the last time you confessed your sin? where you admitted to another Christian that you were 100% in the wrong, where you confessed your sin with no excuses? If the answer is too long ago to remember, well, maybe that tells us something about how we've been thinking about our sins, that we've been minimizing them in our minds. That we've maybe started to fall into the delusion that we're perfect or pretty close to it. Or that we've been living in the darkness and trying to hide all of our sins in the darkness. So that if we can't delude ourselves, maybe we can 
delude other people, make them think we're pretty good. But God is light, and this is what he wants for us, for us to live in the light where he is. So we confess our sins to the Lord. That means not hiding out in the darkness, hiding out in the delusion of the darkness of sin. Rather, we confess to the Lord who we are and what we've done. We live in the light, in the truth. And as we live as sinners in this world, it's almost inevitable that we are going to sin against a brother or sister in Christ. And it is not to admit to not being a Christian if we were to admit that we've sinned. No, but that's what a Christian does. We apologize. We confess our sins to the Lord. We tell the Lord who we are and what we've done. We live in the light. This is one reason to stay in God's word so that we can recognize the darkness of sin where it still might be hiding out in our hearts so that we can bring it into the light and God can deal with it. What is the Christian's relationship with sin? We put it in the light. We repent, to say it another way. We recognize our sin and we look to Jesus. And so we look to Jesus. And John tells us what God does with our sins by telling us who God is. John said that God is faithful. So God is going to remain true to his promises. He also said that God is just. God is always going to be fair. And those two truths about God, that he is faithful and just, assure us of what God does with sin when we see that Jesus is our atoning sacrifice. Jesus is the sacrifice. Now, sacrifice isn't made for his own sake. Sacrifice is made for somebody else's sake. Jesus was killed not for himself, but for our sins. Jesus was killed to take the punishment for our sins. And this sacrifice made atonement with God. Remember, God is just. Sins deserve to be punished. Things that people have done out of line with what God wants them to do deserve to be punished by a holy, eternal God. He is just. But that sacrifice that Jesus made on the cross made atonement for our sins. One forgiveness for our sins. And Jesus announced, it is finished, to say that our sins really are atoned for. And if God is faithful, he's going to remain true to those words, it is finished. He's not going to go back on that. Our sins really are atoned for. They really are forgiven. If God is just, he's not going to punish one sin twice. And when Jesus died on the cross, he took the punishment for each and every last one of our sins. So God would cease to be just. He would cease to be fair if he now punished us for our sins. When we see that Jesus is the atoning sacrifice for our sins. What is the Christian's relationship with sin? We put it in the light. We repent to the Lord. And we look and see that Jesus is the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Recognizing sin and, and repenting doesn't mean that we deserve forgiveness. It's not like we do our part and then God does his part. You know, a murderer doesn't get out of his charge of murder just for saying that he did it. But no, we recognize our sin only to see that Jesus has completely dealt with it already for us. That it is only in his blood that we are purified from our sins. It also doesn't mean 
that we are to go on confidently sinning. As if, as long as we put it in the light and confess it to God, then who cares if we sin? That's an argument that Serinthus may have made. Part of this hidden knowledge that Serinthus claimed to have is that outward things don't really matter. That everything physical is sinful anyway, so, so it doesn't really matter what you do, so do whatever you want. Do whatever feels good. This can easily lead to gross and obvious sins against the Lord. But John said that he was writing so that his readers would not sin. This should be the Christian's relationship with sin, that we don't do it. John also said, if anybody does sin, there is forgiveness. But this is the attitude we have towards sin. If somehow one of us were to sin, that's the attitude we should take with sin. Not, you know, there's going to be forgiveness for it anyway, so I'm just going to go do what I want to do. No, the Bible pictures our struggle against sin and temptation as a battle. We go to war against sin so that we don't do it. We arm ourselves with the Word of God in this struggle against sin so that we can know what sin looks like so it can't sneak up on us. We arm ourselves in this struggle with the Word of God that gives us the motivation to keep fighting. You know, when we see that we have the joy of the forgiveness of sins, why would we want to go jump back in and join sin? Of course we wouldn't want to do that. And so we fight. We have an if-anybody-does-sin relationship with sin. So that means we don't live in it. We don't, we don't plan on it. We don't build our lives around sin. Instead, we live as those who have been purified by the blood of Christ. But John knew that sinners inevitably sin. So when you lose a battle and you fall into sin, know that you have an advocate. Why do we need an advocate? Remember that God is just. He punishes what deserves to be punished. Sin deserves to be punished. We've sinned. We deserve the wrath of God. But Jesus is our advocate. Jesus speaks to God the Father on our behalf. So when you sin, Jesus is standing there in front of the Father saying, I've suffered for this person. I died for that sin. And now I'm looking after them. When God looks at us, he sees our advocate. The one who was perfect in our place. Jesus, the righteous one. We needed somebody like that. Because as hard as we might try, we have not been perfect. When God looks at us, he sees one who is perfect. Jesus, the righteous one. Proven righteous by his resurrection from the dead. We have an advocate. So as we live in the light with God and still feel a darkness of sin inside of us, we have an advocate for that. An advocate who has purified us from that darkness with his blood. An advocate who forgives that darkness. An advocate standing before the Father saying that he died to take away that darkness. What is the Christian's relationship with sin? We put it in the light. We strive not to do it. And above all, God through the Apostle John wants you to know this about your sin. That Jesus won forgiveness for your sins. And not only for yours, but for the sins of the whole world. There is more than enough forgiveness for you. What is the Christian's relationship with sin? To put it simply, your sins are forgiven. Amen.